What's going on engineers? So I've been using MySQL for roughly two decades now and there's been a lot of things that I wish I knew the day I started using MySQL. So rather than you discovering the same things that I did over the same time period, I figured I would just tell them to you now. So here are my seven simple tips for being successful with MySQL. The first tip, and this is a big one, is use indexes. Using indexes properly can drastically speed up the query times of your application. And the trade-off is well worth it. You'll have a slight increase in storage requirements and a slight decrease in write speed. But I'll tell you one thing, you show up at a new job, an organization has a database that isn't indexed at all, and people are just dealing with the really slow response times of the application, and you come in there and index their database, you're going to look like a hero. And adding index is just simple. Alter table, table name, add index, pick an index name, parentheses, specify the column to index on, and that's it. The next step is to normalize your data and use joins. And this involves storing your data separate from one another and then referencing that data with foreign queues. Now an example of this is imagine you're making a blog. So you have a post table. And in that post table, you have a post ID and a title. At this point, it might be really tempting to store just the author name. But instead of storing the author name, why not create an author's table and then store the author ID in the post table? Then rather than just querying on the post table, you can query on the post table and then join the author's table onto the post table. By doing this, you've done a couple of really important things. The first is that you've set yourself up so if you add additional fields to the author's table, it'll be available immediately in the query. And then the second thing you've done is that if a piece of data changes for an author, you don't have to go and update anything in the posts. Next tip is going to be the use InnoDB. There's really only two storage engines with MySQL that people use a lot, and it's MyISAM and InnoDB. But in 2020, you're going to want to use InnoDB. It's an all-around better engine. Besides performing better and the fact that your data is more durable, you also have access to transactions, something that MySAM does not have. And in 2020, that's something you really need for your database. Next step is to enforce data integrity at the database level. And this is using things like unique constraints and cascade deletes. A lot of times it's really tempting to do things in your application that you should be doing in your database. For instance, like cascading deletes. Cascading deletes is when you delete a record and that record has a foreign key that references another table. And so it also deletes those records. So a good example of this is the post and authors table. So imagine you have an author ID one. So if you were to delete that author, then it would look in the post table and delete all the posts with author ID one. And the reason cascading deletes is important is because if you do not cascade delete, then the post table has posts in it that don't have an attached author. And this is, of course, a problem. And here again, you can do this in your application. At the time you delete one record in your application, you could certainly query for all the posts and then delete those as well. It's just this is better handled at the database level. Application logic can break. Database constraints can't. Next tip is to log queries in development. And it's really great to see queries happening in real time. It can help you a lot while you're developing. And I'm really surprised at how many people don't do this because it's so simple to set up. Open your my.cnf file, create a log file like var log mysql.log, do general log file equals, and then the name of the log file, and then do general log equals one. And then once you restart your database, you can do like a tail dash F on var log mysql.log, and then you can go develop, and then every time a query happens to the database, it'll show up in that log and you'll be able to see it. Just make sure you don't do this in production because it will add strain to your database. Next step is to use consistent naming, specifically short, easy to type field names, but whichever format you do choose, just do it everywhere. So if I'm creating a post table, here's one example of bad naming. It'd be like uppercase ID and then lowercase title and then camel case content body and then underscore case created at. Another bad naming convention is to prefix every single field name with the table name. It's just redundant and verbose. A good naming for the post table would be something like post ID, title, content, and create at. Just short, memorable, easy to type names that are all consistent in their format. Next tip is to use transactions for bulk insert. And the reason you want to use transactions is because every time you insert a record, the table has to re-index. By using a transaction, you get one re-index at the end of the transaction. So if you insert 10,000 records, you get one re-index at the end of the 10,000 records. Whereas if you insert 10,000 individual records, you get 10,000 re-indexes. And the performance boost is significant. Without using transactions, maybe you get hundreds or thousands of records per minute. With using a transaction, you're going to get tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of records per minute. And it's really simple to do. If you have your queries like so, instead of doing this, just add a start transaction at the beginning and add a commit at the end. This has the added benefit of making all your data available immediately at the end, whereby if you were to insert 100,000 individual records, the 100,000 records would slowly insert and they would be visible to your application. If you do it in one transaction, just 100,000 records appear instantly at the end of the transaction. 
My final tip for you now that you're comfortable using MySQL is if you don't want to waste your time setting up instance on your own, try out somebody like Linode's one-click applications to get MySQL running fast. Getting going is fast. After you click one-click apps, scroll down to MySQL. You can click that, set yourself a username and also a password twice. Select your database. I'm going to do chase picks. You can choose which data center will go in. You'll want to pick the one that's closest to you for the lowest latency, and they have them all over the world. I'm going to pick Atlanta, which is closest to me. And you can get an instance for as little as $5, which is a capped monthly rate, so you'll know exactly how much you're going to pay for your instance. And after that, click Create. In just a few moments, your instance will be ready. Once the instance is ready, use their built-in console or another means to access your database. You can sign up for a free Linode account today using the link in the description, which is linode.com slash engineerman, you'll also get a $20 credit. And we're done. Over the years, these tips have really helped me out a lot, and I think they'll help you out as well. If you have any questions about anything you saw in this video, please leave them below in the comments. And other than that, I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.